As the Senator mentioned, I'm currently serving my third term as Illinois Attorney General. And since the beginning, my focus has had to be fighting predatory lending in all sectors of the market. Uh, mortgage lending, uh, auto lending, payday, and now student loans. I have a wealth of experience with unfair and deceptive mortgage lending practices, having sued AmeriQuest, Countrywide, and Wells Fargo. And recently, I filed a lawsuit against Westwood College, a for-profit school operating in Illinois, for deceptive marketing and lending practices in its criminal justice program. At the same time mortgage lenders were making unaffordable loans to homeowners, other private lenders were making unaffordable loans to students. After the financial crisis of 2008, third-party lenders stopped offering subprime loans to students, but another troubling trend emerged. For-profit schools expanded their high-interest rate institutional loans. These loans pose a new threat to students, young and old, who are looking to gain skills and degrees to get ahead in this economy. One reason for-profit schools offer private loans is that they have to comply with the federal 90-10 rule, which requires 10% of education funding to come from sources other than Title IV government funds. These private institutional lending programs are either self-funded by the schools or funded by investors with a guarantee to repurchase by the schools. To give you an idea of how exorbitant for-profit tuition costs can be, the criminal justice program at Westwood costs a student over $70,000. However, criminal justice programs at any number of Illinois community colleges cost a tenth as much. Prairie State costs $6,344, Joliet Junior College $6,901, College of DuPage $8,448. I know we're not here to discuss why a student would enroll in a private for-profit program that costs ten times as much as a public one, but it will come as no surprise that we learned during our investigation of Westwood that in order for a student to pay for such an expensive program, students receive not only government grants and loans, but Westwood signed students up for private institutional loans called APEX loans, which the student piled on top of loans from Sally Mae and government sources. APEX loans carry whopping interest rates of up to 18% and require students to make monthly payments while still in school. Compare that with a government loan with a rate of up to 6.8% or a bank loan with rates between 9 and 11%. Our investigations also found that students were completely confused about the purpose and the amount of these loans. Most had no idea what the interest rate was, some thought the Apex loan was paying off their Sally May loan, and some had no idea that they had even taken out an Apex loan. In the end, Westwood graduates are left with tremendous debt for a virtually worthless criminal justice degree because Westwood did not and still does not have regional accreditation for its criminal justice program. A regionally accredited degree is what most law enforcement agencies require for job eligibility. Yet, Westwood graduates who had dreamed of becoming police officers learned from police departments that they could not apply because Westwood did not have the proper accreditation. So, instead of starting the careers of their dreams, most Westwood graduates are saddled with over $70,000 of debt. And over 1,000 such people have contacted my office since we filed our lawsuit two months ago. To top it off, because Westwood is not regionally accredited, almost none of the students' Westwood credits will transfer to another school. These abuses have convinced me that ongoing investigations of for-profit schools' unfair and deceptive practices is absolutely necessary, and I continue to pursue investigations in Illinois. If the abuses we've uncovered continue, students should not be forced to pay for worthless degrees they cannot afford because of expensive tuitions, high interest rates, and inability to obtain jobs in their fields. In addition, I support Senator Durbin's bill to allow private student loans to be discharged in bankruptcy, primarily because private loans carry none of the protections afforded to students who take out federal loans, such as interest rate caps, loan limits, income-based repayment plans, deferment plans, and cancellation rights. Again, I thank the committee, in particular the senator, for your interest in this issue, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to testify today.